What's up guys, it's Adrian Power. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking more about Apex Legends and the big update that came about a day ago that a lot of people didn't really know about. If you guys are excited for this video, definitely leave a like. I would much appreciate that. Subscribe if you guys are brand new and want some more Apex Legends information and videos. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Let's go. All right, so first off, this all this information is gonna be coming from the Apex Legends Reddit. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description with this information so you guys can go check it out and read it for yourself. But this is specifically coming from Jay Fresh Respawn. He is the community manager, kind of that voice that Respawn needs to reach out to the community and keep us informed. So he just wanted to talk about all the different things, you know, the state of Apex Legends, what changes are coming, and actually what changes have already came. But first off, we wanna talk about the type of updates we can expect here in Apex Legends. So he says, we make less frequent, better tested, high impact balance changes in order to minimize the impacts on your time spent mastering the game. Pretty much in simple terms, they are gonna do less updates because the updates that they're going to send out are going to be a lot more impactful and well tested. And that's great. That's a great thing to see because we want to have updates that come out that actually work. We don't want to see like a new gun or a new legend come in and just be totally overpowered or even underwhelming and not really have a place in the game. So that's really cool to see that they're really dedicated to making the updates actually worth it. So I really, really respect that and like that. Even though we're not going to see a lot I'm glad that they're actually gonna be putting more time and testing into each and every update. All right, to jump right into everything, we are gonna be talking about weapon balancing. And again, this came out, I believe yesterday or the day before March, it was either March 7th or March 6th. But either way, these weapon balance changes are in the game now, live. All right, so let's just jump right into the weapon balancing. So the wingman got a nerf. This goes across all platforms, PC, Xbox, PS4. So the rate of fire for the wingman was reduced from 3.1 to 2.6 shots per second. So it's a little bit slower fire rate. So you're not gonna be able to you know, bang, bang, shoot off those uh, shots very, very fast. The second thing is the skull piercer headshot damage multiplier reduced from 2.5 to 2.25. All this is saying is that when you get a headshot with the skull piercer attachment it's just not going to do as much it's going to be a little bit of a change but not huge because they, they still want to reward you for getting a headshot so 2.5 to 2.25 it's a change but not a huge one and the third thing that they changed with the wingman is increased base hip fire spread and decrease the rate at which hip fire spread decays. So the hip fire spread with the wingman, when you're just sitting there aiming with from the hip, that's gonna be a little bit wider, so that's gonna be a little bit less accurate, and the, the decrease in which the hip fire spread shrinks. So after a shot from the hip, the reticles or the little markers from your hip fire will shrink slower than it was before. So these are small adjustments. They didn't like nerf it into oblivion, which is great. They still want the wingman to have a place. And you know, they want people to use the wingman because as you use it more, the better you'll get. So increase that ceiling cap. All right, the next thing that they nerfed was the peacekeeper. And these are things that the community has asked for. They've been talking about for a very long time. Everybody knows the wingman and the peacekeeper are two of the best guns in the game. That's obvious. And so they wanted to address it to kind of make things a little bit more even, fair, but not completely obliterate these weapons. All right, so the Peacekeeper, the shotgun bolt. So this refers specifically to the attachment. The shotgun bolt chamber rate has been reduced for the Peacekeeper only. So that means when you put on a level one or a gray uh, shotgun bolt, that usually uh, speeds up your fire rate so that you're able to shoot off more rounds a lot quicker. So that was from 10% to 7.5%. Two and a half percent difference, that's kind of significant. Level two, or the blue, is 20% to 13%, and then the purple, or level three, is 25% to 16%. So they, they hit this uh, attachment pretty hard, but again, this is only for the Peacekeeper. So those values, the 10, 20, and 25%, those still apply for the Mozambique and for the Ava 8. So those have not been touched, this is Peacekeeper only. So pretty much with the Peacekeeper, you're not going to be able to fire off rounds as quickly as you were before this update went live. 
So though the shotgun bolt will still be a viable attachment for the Peacekeeper to shoot off rounds a little bit quicker, they're not going to be as quick as they were before, which makes the Peacekeeper uh, a little bit more in line with the other guns in the game. They also reduced the Wingman and Peacekeeper availability in all zone tiers. So you're not going to be seeing them as often, which is a good thing. So you're not going to be in a lobby full of Wingmen and Peacekeepers scattered throughout you know, the whole entire map. And then the other thing that they did to the weapons was increase the availability of energy weapons and ammo in zone tiers. So we're going to be seeing a lot more ammo, energy ammo, and energy weapons. You're going to see a lot more Havocs, Triple Takes, and the Devotion. So expect to see those a lot more. They want to have those guns a little bit more prevalent in the game, so keep your eye out for those. They did address the P2020 and the Mozambique. A lot of people have been talking about these guns are so weak that they need a buff badly. But they didn't touch them in this game. So the reason why is that they said that their goal is to have a power curve of weapons. Meaning that some weapons will be weaker and more common while others will be stronger and rarer. Some weapons are intentionally less powerful until fully perped or made up with their hop ups. While other weapons on the bottom of the power curve are your early game better than melee. But gotta upgrade out of ASAP weapons. Pretty much they just want those to be your go to weapons when you first drop. They don't want them to be viable in the later on. I can see that, but at the same time, they're so weak that you could still like get dominated by somebody just with fists. So the only thing that I want to address on that part is that I wish the P2020 got a little bit of a buff in the damage. I feel like it's too weak, takes way too many shots. And then the Mozambique, I wish they would just increase the base ammo capacity. That would be so great if they just raised that just a little bit. All right, next up, they talk about the hitbox discrepancies. If you guys don't know, there's a big problem when it comes to the hitboxes in Apex Legends. Gibraltar has the biggest hitbox, meaning that he's a giant target and he's a lot easier to hit than, for example, like Wraith. Wraith has the smallest hitbox. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to leave the original video linked down in the description so you guys can go check that out and have that explained to you that way. So pretty much they talked about that they are aware of this situation and that they are working on things, they're doing tests. It is a kind of a difficult thing to fix, but they're going to do what they can to balance things out so that the game will be a little bit more fair for those who want to play with bigger legends. So this is what they said specifically about hitbox size reductions. So they said, since these adjustments have a major impact on the game, we want to make sure there aren't any major bugs, so we didn't want to rush them out. If these adjustments prove to be insufficient, we'll consider additional adjustments during season one. So that's great. They're going to be going to fix this when the battle pass or season one comes out, which unfortunately they did not address in this actual post, but we know that it is coming out in the month of March. Stay tuned for the channel. Definitely subscribe to keep updated with that Apex Legends news. All right, here are some more changes for the legends in the game. So caustic, the traps were reduced cooldown to 25 seconds from 30 seconds. So it's going to be a little bit quicker to get those traps from the caustic. Increased radius for the traps and proximity radius about 10%. So it's going to hit a wider range. And then for the traps as well, they removed a one second delay on the smoke dealing damage to players. So the smoke's going to hit a lot quicker than it did before. Pathfinder, the insider knowledge, that's pretty much when he sticks his hand in the little the little poles scattered throughout the map. You can see that when you open up your map, they'll have a little icon on it if you're the Pathfinder. Uh, increased the numbers of beacons in the world from 12 to 10. So they just increased that by two so that there's going to be a little bit more options to use that passive. The lifeline, the care package removed slight chance for that level four armor or helmets will drop. So pretty much they reduced the gold armor and helmet drop rate in those so it's a little bit of a nerf i don't really see why they needed to do that because it's still super rare but uh, that's what they decided to do and then for the wraith the end of the void which is her tactical the cooldown increased from 20 to 25 seconds so it's going to take a little bit longer to use that once you've already done it and lastly the bangalore her double time so when she gets shot she speeds up the reduced movement speed bonus to 30, from 40% uh, to 30%. So she's going to move 10% slower, so she'll still be pretty fast. All right, guys, that will do it for today's video. Just to wrap everything up in this video, because I know it was a lot of information. Weapon balances are now live. Once you go into your game, you'll be able to use those updated weapons. 
The character rig and ability adjustments are coming in Season 1, which hopefully will come out this month. We don't know exactly when, but it will come out. So those ones expect here in the near future. And expect a lot more from Respawn and Apex Legends when it comes to this game. Seems like they are very dedicated to updating this game as much as possible while still giving us content that isn't outrageous, overpowered, or anything like that. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you guys joining me for this video. Again, if you like the video, definitely let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know what you guys are most excited for about this change. Are you excited about the weapon changes, the upcoming Season 1 Battle Pass? I just want to know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>